we are on an adventure to go see puffins, I hope. Rathlin Island. Maybe that's my ferry. So there's all of these other little boat tours that run daily and you can see when they depart and if they fill up then they just erase the board but we're not going on one of those because we actually planned and we bought a ticket and i feel very accomplished and i had a very nice bus driver to take me up here today so he was telling me all of the places and he stopped the bus like very close to where i was supposed to be going Aboard the ship with a tiny little puffin. We're gonna catch you. We're gonna catch you. Run faster. Run faster. Run faster. Such significant. Tag. Hello, a gray cow. Hi, little tiny cow. Oh, he's taking a nap. This guy's curious. Hi. How cool would it be a cow? to do is just like eat moss and take naps. Sign me up. Okay, so we've got off the bus. Whoa, it's windy! And now we're going to see the birds! So we're in bird nesting season. This is one of the biggest bird sanctuaries in all of Europe. So it's pretty cool. And it wasn't really until 1960 did the island start to reform it to make their a nesting area. Why is it great? Because out here, we have the Atlantic Ocean. And seabirds like the ocean. So let's continue to walk down and see the sea, be the sea. And then keep watching because Rathlin Island is super cool. There's some amazing lore here, both from Scotland and from Ireland and just like in general from the world people like the Romans and the Stone Age people. So we'll learn about that in a bit. So let's learn a little bit about the puffins. Now I tried to take a photo of it, but we'll see if that turns out. You guys may not be able to see them, but I can see them. They're so cute with their little, little tiny orange feet. So they're all on this grassy area down here. And puffins really don't fly. They can fly, but usually their flight is only to come to land to have their kids or to go back to sea after they're done having their kids. Now, a puffin will take about five years before it decides to have its babies. And over the past couple of years, they've noticed that we're losing puffins. They think it's to do with global warming, but they're not really sure because puffins eat stuff in the sea and there's not as much stuff in the sea with that anymore. But all around here, there's not just puffins. So this entire island over here is all gamos or gamots, however you say it. And maybe we can see them up here a little bit better. There's two up there having a little baby. There are loads of whatever those are. Sea seagulls? No. I don't know what they are. Little white birds. And there's some right by these beautiful daisies. Hi. So there's baby right down there. There's a mommy and a daddy and a baby. I assume it's a mom and a dad. Could be two dads. But the baby's there. Hi. How's it going? Puffin is down there. Dinos staring at puffins. I can see them and you can't. I will explain the puffins to you. So these puffins have very orange feet. And they like to be in the holes. Yeah, they have very cool shoes. 
I think more people should be like buffers. Okay, now we're gonna go explore more of what's here because I want to see this lighthouse now. So we are walking down to what they call the Upside Down Lighthouse. And it was super cool. So built in 1912. And basically what happened is it's really hard to build stuff on that. So they built the lighthouse upside down where that's part of it. And then that's the other part. So even today, this is a massive engineering feat because of the rock and the stability around here. We reached the bottom of the lighthouse. I wonder what's here. Oh, I have lied. It still goes down more. Ooh. Oh, this is cool. Look, we can see how the lighthouse works. Look at that. So up top, you can see this little thingy, is it locked? Yeah, little thingy spinning. And that's what warns ships off the island. Now, why is this lighthouse so critical here? Well, there's so many shipwrecks around the area. Like there's even a Viking ship that's wrecked around here. And because there's all of these shipwrecks, there's a bunch of people that do scuba diving because fish like also to live in ships. So it's really important to have this lighthouse to hopefully not the as many ships crash. Okay, now let's go explore a little bit more of the outside. We've seen the bird babery. I am coining that term after I made it up a couple weeks ago. And yeah, cool, what a beautiful seal on this island. Look at these guys with their tails in the air and their bellies in the water. I also see a very cool establishment. I think we should go walk to. So as we walk to this awesome establishment, I'm going to tell you a little bit more facts about Bratton Island. So this place has been around since some Methylithic times. Now the cool thing about the Methylithic people, they kind of started settling and doing farming. The Paleolithic people were still into like hunting and gathering and that sort of stuff. But the Methylithic is the hardest work. People started to do farming and just settle instead of roam around. So somewhere around here, they set up their first establishment and they came out here probably and ate some seals for breakfast and farmed this whole land. And then the Romans came. That was like 8,000 years between those two time periods. So time job. So when the Romans were here, I don't know much about that time, but I do know that they were here. After the Romans were here, it was basically the Scots who came over, I think. And then in the 1500s, McDonald clan were here, and they were a gang out of, uh, out of Scotland somewhere. There was a couple of different gangs up there, and they did gang things. So they were here for a while, and it's because they were here that Scottish Gaelic and Irish Gaelic were so similar. So that's cool. So now you know that. So our plan was to explore that house. But that's pokey. And there's another fence and that's electrical. And I've already gotten electrocuted enough this year, so we're not gonna go that way. Let's go try to be like a seal. Swim to the castle. Look at this nice little beach. Oh look, it's a shell. It doesn't smell like this. Ooh, snacks. I can use a snack. I brought strawberries, but I want something more of the strawberries. These rocks are really soft and they're very round and rocky. Just think. Imagine now I'm rock, rock, rock. Oh. 
and I'm walking over all of these cool rounded stones, hiding in a cave from, I forgot who was chasing him, whoever was chasing him. And then maybe he built a little house like this, or maybe not. If you're gonna be in exile, this is a pretty dope place to be in exile, you guys. I didn't lie. Look, I found the sign of truth. See, Rob the Rockstar. Check refuge on this island. I know facts. Maybe. Or that. Can I get up there though? Oh, that's a spider web. Ah, that's a big spider. We're both equally scared, man. Join the vlog. Don't worry. I don't think I'm gonna go that way because Charlotte looks like she has fangs. Let's try to go up this mountain. Get it to the house. House of Old. What are you going to look? Oh, it had a sick pillar. Okay. Now I'm even more intrigued. It's probably some sort of like a merchant's house to, you know, hold the shipping of the fishes, kelp. Try not to fall on the roof. That's the roof, by the way. How do I get in? Maybe I can't get in. Oh, well, we'll keep exploring. This is so cool. We're seeing history, you guys. Okay. Oh, look, you can see the bed. What else is in here that we can see? So this looks like it could have been an old fishing fishing thing and maybe the guy just like slept there those looks like some old fishing rings and a large bin maybe to keep uh like lobsters and that sort of stuff fresh for his customers you can see a lot of fishing nets over here and a little fishing basket to catch crabs and lobsters the merchant of Rathlin island and his house at your service Okay, this is very cool. So right now we have a more modern fire pit and maybe a little rock to sit on, but over here, we can see the original one. So over here, there probably was like an outdoor barbecue where you would just like barbecue some stuff and maybe the fish, if I have spider in my face, maybe the fish merchant, you know, he would grill some of his crabs or lobster for people. And then he would have a nice tent here so they could cook their real food. <laughs> Go on the beach. Food stories because I'm hungry. But totally, if I was a merchant of fish, I would grill my food. So I'm gonna sit on this bench, have some water, and then we're gonna plan our next adventure. Okay, so we're gonna now go explore that building oh, straight ahead of us. That is very white. So let's go see the White Castle. We've reached the next establishment. And not only is it a kiln house, it's also right now a camping house. So let's go take a look. Kelp house. So for a while, this was a kelp house. But then, there was better things to do, like dancing. So this turned into like a dance hall and a theater. How cool. I may go to a dance hall if there's like windows and sweepers like this. Oh, we can come out here with our little drinks. Sit on the stairs. Drink, 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 drink. And then go back to the dance hall. This is sick. And this is like super, super white brick. Stone. It's still. Chalk. I'm not really sure. It's just pretty. Let's go down the stairs and explore the other side of Kelp House. So as you can tell, it's really windy. 
And why, why are people camping in there? Because it blocks the wind. And you can have a nice little fire and you don't have to fight against the wind. But check that out. If you've got to camp inside Kelp House, this is your view for your morning coffee. Oh, that's pretty sick. So if you're wondering why do I have my headphones on, because it's really windy and my hat keeps blowing off without them. So it's keeping my ears warm and my hat staying on my head. And now we're going to see if there's any creatures in the tide pools. Well, look at that. That's pretty. Creatures. It's cold over here. There's beautiful shells around here. Oh, that's not a, that's a live animal. That's, sorry, dude. I didn't know you were living there. <laughs> I thought it was a real I was like, this is in such good shape. Yeah, someone's taking care of it right now, an animal. <laughs> animals. What do we see? I don't see any animals. But I don't really know what you're supposed to see inside a tadpole. Inside a tadpole? inside a tide pool. Maybe you would see tadpoles, but I don't see any frogs around here, so I feel like that would be a, a challenge to find frogs. Let's see. Because we have these little grasses and flowers, so I think, I don't think the tide, I think the tide is out right now. Maybe there's crabs in the tag pools? Maneuver sea life. But I'm a pro at ocean! Okay, I'm gonna show you the town of downtown Rathlin. Now, Rathlin has about 100 residents. Yeah, one, zero, zero. And the census says the population is on the rise. There's all of these super cute houses here. And throughout the island, we see little towers like this everywhere. Boom, boom, boom. I don't know why, but they do. So in the 1800s, there was this dude from Britain who came to this island. And he was like, this is a very strange place. The ruler of Rathlin Island was a judge. And he sat on a turf throne. Now, if you look around, there's a lot of turf. It's really hard to get lost in a town of 100 people, but apparently I've done it. So I'm gonna go get myself unlost. Oh, this is sick. Look at this. What is this? And how do I get one? It's like an old pump. I'm in. I'm in. We all need one of those. This is a very cool island, you guys. I'm gonna go walk through the rest of the town and explore, and I'm gonna show you what I'm seeing. So, yeah, thanks for coming along this super awesome trip to Rathlin Island to see the puffins, which I saw way more than you did because of logistical reasons. But yeah, thanks for watching. Ciao. Okay, one more thing. I've got to say daisies are like the best flower ever. Look at them! They're at least so happy. Yay. <laughs>